Hi folks, welcome to the Cannabis Corner. I'm your host, Kerry Burns. In the United States of America, we plant about 325 million acres a year of uh, different types of food crops like corn, uh, sorghum, barley, rye, wheat, rice, hay, tobacco, just, just various items like that. And, and it lists is about, of about 40 different items that we plant on this 350 million acres. But at, of the total amount harvest, uh, planted, we usually lose between five and 10% of the acreage planted. Um, in some cases it's less, in some cases it's more. I mean, like in corn, we lose about 5% of the harvest. In other words, if we planted, uh, say, 100 acres, only 95 would have been harvested. So they, they on average, they lost between five and 6%. But if you look at crops like uh, wheat, and, uh, and rye, things like that. Well, they're uh, like rye, and for instance, it only 20% of the crop was harvested for what was planted. And wheat, as much in some places, as little as half that was planted was harvested. So you lose a lot of acreage uh, in the normal farming scheme here in America. And of that 325 million acres that's harvested each year, 88 million were for corn grown in this country. Uh, some of it was for food, about five to 10 million uh, ac acres of it was grown for corn for cattle for feed, and uh, about 25 million acres of it was grown for fuel, to add as a fuel substance in our uh, f fuel that we buy. Now, what I'm proposing is that when you look at what, now the farmer's getting ripped off in America. You take the, f the corn farmer. Okay, he's going to harvest about 150 bushels of corn per acre. The current price right now is around $5.40 per bushel. So he's going to get about $800, $800 to $850 if he keeps that average up on each acre. And that's not a given. I mean, it depends on rainfall in different areas here and there. So, you know, that's just sort of a, a general figure that they can approach getting. I'm sure a lot of them, if they get that this year with the drought the way it's been in some places, uh, they're probably counting their lucky stars. But, okay, so he's going to make about $800 an acre growing that corn. A sorghum farmer, even though he's going to get, instead of 540 a bushel like the corn, he's going to get about 970 a bushel, but he's only going to be able to produce about half as much. Sorghum, you get about 70, 75 bushels per acre. Corn, around 150, so about double. So, but the cost per acre of what he makes still is around the same, same as corn. It's between about 750 and $850 per acre. Uh, you look at the oat farmer. Now, we have 50 million acres of that total that we plant each year is devoted to, to oats. And uh, on oats, the if you get 50 bushels an acre, I mean, that's a good crop, and they get about 240 a bushel. So they're not even making $200 an acre, the oat farmers. And so the, the if, you, if you look at all the different prices, now even the tobacco farmer, tobacco in America, they produce over 700 million pounds of tobacco in this country each year. It's done on about 320,000 acres of land. Uh, this computes to almost 2 million pounds of tobacco a day is consumed in this country. But the tobacco farmer gets $1.77 a pound. And with his 2,100 pound an acre yield, he's making around $3,500 an acre compared to the $800, say, the corn farmer's making. Now, a potato farmer, he's doing okay. He harvests about 25 to 30,000 pounds of potatoes per acre, but he only gets eight cents a pound. But it still works out to be around 1,400 to $1,600 an acre. So he's doing pretty good. Now, the reason I say that the American farmer's getting ripped off, okay, the tobacco farmer's making about 3,500 an acre. He's, he makes the most of, of any of those crops that are grown for that type of acreage and all. Potato farmer would be number two on that list, then corn, and then it breaks on down from there. The reason I say that the American farmer is getting ripped off, if we were growing hemp, okay, you take cotton before I even get to that, but we, you take cotton. Cotton, right now, you get about 800 pounds an acre. They give you about 80 cents, an acre, 80 cents a pound for it, okay? That's about six, $700. Still within the range of what the others were, so it's not, not this fortune of money. Uh, cotton is about 485, 486 pounds for each bale, so you don't even quite get two bales per acre when you grow cotton. Now, when you, if we took just the acreage that is not harvested in this country, it's planted but it's not harvested, it works out to be about 30 million acres each year of the total that we plant.
If you take that 30 million acres, okay, and we take the 25 million acres that of the total that's grown for corn is grown for fuel and add that to it, that's 55 million acres. Now this is land pretty much that uh, could easily grow hemp. And here's the difference though. Okay, you remember the, farm, the corn farmer's making $800 for his, his crop per acre. Okay, the hemp farmer, we can get 30 barrels of oil per acre. And if you just do that at $70 a barrel, which is where the price has been fluctuating to right now, and it's been as high as 100, 110, but just say do it at $70 a barrel. That right there is $2,100 an acre. The only one that does better than him is the tobacco farmer. But wait a minute, that's just the oil coming off the hemp. If you take the 2,000 pounds of hemp fiber, and let's use the 1940s price for hemp fiber. The, the current price is, fluctuates so much it's hard to even put a, 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 a number on it. But we're gonna use the one when the government started the Hemp for Victory campaign. And it was 10 cents a pound. Okay, there's another $200 in the farmer's pocket right there. 5,000 pounds of cellulose herds make paper, dynamite, 50,000 other products. There you go, that's another $400 in his pocket. Okay, $400, $500. Now he's $700. He, he just went past the tobacco farmer right there. Okay, you take the six tons of pressed seed that's left over after you squeeze the oil out of it. Six tons worth. It's the best cattle feed out there. Way cheaper to produce than the sorghum that the farmer's only getting $9.70 a bushel for and it's 70 bushels per acre. I mean, we're talking about six to 12 tons of seed per acre when you're growing hemp. So what does that do? That drives the cost of feed for the cattle down. It's also more nutritious, three times more nutritious than any of the grain, grain and sorghum mixture that they're feeding them today. So what does that do? That drops our food prices because it's cheaper for them to produce it. They will make the same amount of money as far as the farmer. In fact, he'll do actually better because if he gets to grow hemp because he will be making way more per acre, four times as much as the corn farmer on just about anything. That does not even include the smokable flower tops, the marijuana, the cannabis, if you will. We could give that away. That'd be zero dollars per pound and no yield to the farmer after the seeds were removed. We could also extract the oil from it. That'd be part of the, uh, the oil mixture. We could do it with that. And all of the leaf matter that fell to the soil that, did, that remained on the stalks and all, that could all be ground up for mulch. All of these items would boost the cost per acre for the farmer. If you leave the cannabis out of it and give it away, we're talking around four to $5,000 per acre. Now this is $1,500 more per acre than the tobacco farmer. You say, well, why don't we just grow tobacco? Well, we're already producing 720 million pounds of tobacco at the rate of 2 million pounds a day for the 40 million that smoke cigarettes out, the 40 or 50 million that smoke cigarettes out there. The, who are you gonna sell it to? You could get to a point where, you know, they did that on 300,000 acres, that's nothing. That's nothing. If we took the 25 million acres that we waste growing grain. Now you look at the grain, okay, 25 million acres that they put for corn, <clears throat> for grain alcohol. That brings in $20 billion for the grain alcohol. $20 billion at the cost of the corn per bushel. Now, 20 billion, okay? If, if you take the 30 barrels of oil that you're getting from the hemp, it's two and a half times that amount. It's $57 billion. $57 billion to $20 billion. I'd say the farmer's getting ripped off. Why? Because we're worried about our children getting a hold of marijuana? Are you serious? The best way to control marijuana would be to legalize it, put it in people's shops to sell, like you do alcohol, and put an age limit on it. And that way, you can control it. When you have something in an illegal market, there are no control. In fact, children are just as good of customers to the illegal market as the adults are. It's a joke. And the fact that if your child is gonna get a hold of something out there, with all of the stuff that's out there that's legal, that's so damn dangerous, you better hope they get a hold of marijuana. That's the least dangerous out there. It's one thing that's not going to hurt them like the other substances are. So if your child is prone to experiment and all, you need to talk to them. That's what it's all about. You become a good parent and you teach the child to be a good child. It doesn't matter if your child experiments with cannabis or not. It's not going to hurt them. It's not going to give them an addictive habit. And it may keep them 
from an addictive habit like cigarettes, or alcohol, or prescription drugs. All of those together kill 700,000 people a year. The cannabis has never killed anyone. So let's quit ripping the farmer off. Let's get the hemp growing in this country. It's, we're, we, we could grow on a third of land if we just took the wasteland that's not being harvested and produced the hemp and fuel. Gas in this country would be a dollar a gallon. A dollar a gallon. And the farmers would still be making a ton of money, way more than they're doing now with anything that feeds us. I'm not saying that we shouldn't grow the crops for food. Of course, we have to have those. But if we can put more money in the farmer's pocket and all, food prices in general will come down for us. And we don't have to affect any part of the market because this market doesn't exist right now. Some stupid idiots back in the 30s made sure that they did away with it. And believe it or not, it was the beginning of the ruin of this country. And it played a valuable role. And the Controlled Substance Act for drugs and marijuana and all that, that's just more hatred on top of, of what they had already started. But we're preventing a trillion and a half dollar industry right now in this country, right now, today. We could put the oil that we make off of growing it here in America back into our economy, not into the Arabs, not into Venezuela's, not into Canada's, not into Mexico's, not into anybody that's out there that we import 65% of our 20 million barrels a day that we consume. Come on, America. We talk about jobs, you talk about putting people back to work. What kind of jobs and stuff would be generated if we put that money in our economy? It doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure that out. I'm not even an economist and I know that much. I'm a scientist, I'm a botanist, I'm a plant person. I have nothing, but I know how to add and I know how to subtract. So let's quit ripping the American farmer off. Let's quit this hokey about our children getting a hold of marijuana, that's ridiculous. And let's quit ruining the lives of productive Americans just because they want to smoke pot, just because they want to use the safest herb known to man. Well, let's lock them up. Honestly, people, the hemp industry is waiting for America. It can start as simple as planting the seeds. Nothing more. I thank you for joining me, Kenny.